I was watching a video where this girl said, if you had $100,000 and you invested $100,000 per year for nine to 10 years, you would be at $4 million. And here's something about me. I am always crunching numbers. I am always crunching numbers. I have been to the investment calculator so many times that literally if I had a nickel for every time that I ran certain investing scenarios, I would probably be have, add extra million to my net worth, right? And I was like, $100,000 over nine to 10 years is a total contribution of 900,000 to a million bucks. And at 10% in a 10 year time frame, it is not going to generate a $3 million in returns at 10%. You want to know why? The runway is too short. You get more money from your money working. Cause see, there's two parts to this. There's the amount of money that you invest that's called contributions. And then the money that your contributions makes that's called interest. So I went to the investment calculator cause I was just like, this is way, way off. And if you were had a hundred thousand dollars and you invested a hundred thousand dollars for nine or 10 years, you would be at $1.7 million. So her math was off two point three million dollars now why am i bringing this up this video is titled the pathology of the poor and this girl has this video that has literally slid by i checked the comments no one checked her math no one checked her math and this is one of the main reasons that people are poor it's a lack of financial being financially, fiscally capable. I mean, like literally, I'm just looking through the comments. No one, no one actually checked her math. No one actually said anything about it. And this is one of the reasons that people are poor. One of the big reasons is the inability to save. Right now, I'm going to take a picture of a car of the odometer and of the title because banks have really clapped down on auto loans. They have really clamped down. And this is for a $5,500 car, $5,500 car. Now in my world, you should not have to go to the bank to get 5,500 bucks for a car. That's cash money you should have regardless of how much money you make. I don't care if you make minimum wage, I don't care if you drive for Uber. I don't care if you drive for DoorDash. You should have five to $10,000 in the bank somewhere. And this is hands down the biggest reason that people are poor. The inability to save money. The inability to actually, let me go ahead and explain it to you. Let's say, Let's see, what is minimum wage? I don't even know. Let me, let me check. Uh, let's see. Uh, minimum wage. I, I really don't know what minimum wage is. Minimum wage in Georgia. Minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. So if you had a minimum wage job, 7.25 times a 160, you would make $1,160 per hour times 12. You would make $13,920 per year. Okay. So we've established what minimum wage is. I don't care if you had a minimum wage job, you should have five to $10,000 somewhere. And I'm going to give you a breakdown. So we already know that if you're making minimum wage, that you cannot live on your own, not in the state of Georgia, you cannot live on your own. So you will be living with someone or roommates. 
So let's go ahead and say you're, 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 you're bringing home, let's just divide that by 12. All right, so you're bringing home a thousand. And let's say out that thousand, 500 bucks went towards rent, which would leave you an additional $500, which means you cannot have a car payment, you cannot have student loans, you cannot have credit card payments. You cannot have that stuff because your income is too low, okay? So one of the things that you need to do is to understand where you are because I worked with a girl years and years ago in the medical industry. I think she was making nine bucks. I think she actually, she told me she was making nine fifty an hour. This was nine fifty an hour times 160. She was making 1520 times 12. She was making $18,240 a year. And this girl had not one, but two paid off cars. And let me explain to you how she got here. Her father sat her down. She had a great father who sat her down and said, look, you live with me and your mom. You should save all of your money because this is going to be your foundational money for the rest of your life. He sat down, he broke it down, he explained to her what she should do. So when she got her first job at the age of 16, she literally saved 90% of the money that she made. So I would assume that she was making minimum wage and minimum wage was less than what it is now. And she was in high school, so she wasn't working full 40 hours. But that one thing, that one habit of saving money allowed her to not have one car, but two paid off cars. And once again, she was making $18,000 a year. But here's the thing, and I'm, I'm going to share this with you. When you're in the position to pay cash for things, uh, I will tell you the tale of my two neighbors who live next door. We're, we're really good terms. They had a million dollar house that they paid cash for. They both drove Mercedes. He drove the Mercedes drop top. She drove a Mercedes uh, SUV. And one day we we're just sitting around talking because we we're really close. And this is one of the things that I have noticed that when people feel comfortable with you, they will tell you a lot of stuff and they just kind of put it out, you know, probably to live because they didn't have bills. They didn't have a mortgage. They didn't have car payments. They didn't have credit card debt. I can tell you when you don't have a lot of bills, it's not that expensive to live. So this girl I worked with, you know, she was about 29. So she started this saving habit at 16. So she had 13 years of crazy savings. And she told me um, when she got her first car that she paid cash. Uh, she was 21 when she bought her first. Well, actually her father gave her a car. And then when that broke down, she bought her first car. And she had been saving since the age of 16 to 21. So she was able to pay cash for a fairly new car because she had been saving money. She didn't have any credit and she kept saving and saving and saving because she didn't have a car payment and she didn't have credit cards and she didn't have this stuff. So by the time that, you know, she got a little older, she wanted another car. So she was able to buy two cars and pay cash and she wasn't making $20,000 a year. Now, let me go ahead and do this real quick inflation calculator because uh i need to put this in oh it pops right up so this was many many years ago because 950 an hour let's see what well, this was going to be 1996 and nine 50. That was the equivalent of $29.93 today. So, um, adjusted for inflation, because, you know, once again, this was a long time ago. This was a long time ago. 29.93 times 160. 
she was making 29.93 times 160. Adjusted for inflation, she was making 4,700 per month times 12. She was making, adjusted for inflation, she was making 57,000. So that $9.50 back then, what today would be 57,000. So just put that in proper context because 950 years and years ago was actually quite a bit of money. And I say it in the terms of, you know, to put it in practical, uh, to put it in a practical manner. So, and then uh, she had just bought a house. And when she bought her house, she was able to put 50% down because she has such really good savings habit it's because she paid cash for her car so she had no car loans and for some reason she did end up getting like three credit cards because uh, her dad told her it's like you need to get credit cards you're not going to really use them that much but you need to have them so she did have a credit score she had a really good credit score because she never used her credit and i just look at this because I have people who will fight me tooth and nail. And this is one of the habits that is creating a problem today. McDonald's has daily pay and Uber has daily pay. And this is because people cannot save money. This is, you know, and I'm probably going to do some more serious uh, videos in the series, the pathology of the poor because um, this whole inability to save money is crazy. It is crazy, but it's real. It's real. So that's the first reason, the, the inability to save money. Once again, I don't care if you're making minimum wage, which is $7.25 per hour, you need to govern your life accordingly, meaning you're not gonna be living by yourself, and you cannot be driving the finance car. You just don't have enough money. And I will have people, because I will tell you, years and years ago when I was living in that boarding house and I was working all of these crappy jobs, I managed to save up $4,000 in one year. And I don't even think at that time, I don't even think I was making between both jobs 20,000 a year. I don't think I was making 20,000 a year. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's habits and behaviors. It's habits and behaviors. And going to the second part of this, you know, like watching this video, that people have no sense of numbers. That she was able to casually say this and not one person checked her in the comments. Now, and this video has 30,000 views. Not one person checked her in the comments. I am probably going to check her from one of my ghost accounts because uh, I'm going to be like, um, if you were an investor, I'm, I'm probably going to do that from one of my ghost accounts because I'm not trying to start any YouTube beefs. But, um, or then again, I may do it from this channel. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. And uh, I'm going to do it a little later because people have no sense of proportion and priority that she could actually say something and have 30,000 people watch her videos and no one had a problem with her. And I'm going to say it blatantly lying because she has a PhD. She's a finance person. She knows good and well that 10% on such a minimum amount of money is not going to yield. She knows better based upon her resume. She knows better. She knows better. And this is this like slip of the tongue that I've seen so many YouTubers talk about that if you invest X amount of money and it's always nine or 10 years or 20 years. Now, 20 years, it becomes um, more, let's see, let's do it 20 years. So at 20 years, let's do 20. Now, at 20 years, if you're investing 100,000 and you have 100,000 to start with and you invest 100,000 a year, 
for 20 years, which is going to be a contribution basis of 2 million, you will have 6.4 million because over 20 years, your interest, the money that your money makes will have enough time to outwork the money that you put in. So if she had said 15 years, that would have been, let's, let's go ahead and do 15. Uh, if she had said 15 years, she'd been kind of close. So it would have taken about 17, took 16 years to get to the 4 million. Now, why do people say nine to 10 years? Shorter time frames because people are impatient. Impatient because you know, a decade is a long, long, long time. You know, I need my money. Like, this is J like J those commercials, JG Wentworth. I want my money now. And like I said, you know, based upon her resume, she knows better. She knows better. She knows better. But here is the thing the average person doesn't know better. And that's why they're able to slide these things into videos and get views and get your attention because the average person doesn't know any better. It's just that bad. All right. So one of the things I got going on is the instant, the, into the intellectual property school and the program. And once again, um, pretty much I'm going to start running ads probably September, October, because, um, there's some things I got to do, but right now you can sign up for the intellectual property school and you can make more money than you spend on the intellectual property school in your first year following the instructions in the intellectual property school. I'm going to teach you two ways to start your YouTube channel. There's the foundational structure of the YouTube channel. And then there's how to construct the YouTube channel to get you an audience that would actually pay you money. And once again, there's like constructing YouTube in the prevalence of the average YouTuber, where you're constructing your YouTube channel using trendy views, trendy topics. And that's not the type of YouTube channel that's going to get you paid from your own efforts. It may get you paid from YouTube, but <clears throat> years and years ago, I mean, I've only started paying attention to my YouTube money last two years because there was my online course money. that was always like three, 400 times bigger than my YouTube money. So I never really, and this year, my YouTube money will probably cross six figures for the first time ever. So it's worth noting, but essentially, I will tell you when I started YouTube, my YouTube channel wasn't monetized for the first two years. And I made $62,000 in my first year and I made $92,000 my second year. And my YouTube channel was not monetized. So I can teach you how to build a YouTube channel that makes money, whether it's monetized or not. The links are in the first comment or in the description. So go ahead and sign up today because I got a lot of stuff I need to teach you so you can win in this game and you don't have to be Poe no mo. You don't have to be Poe no mo.